Hello, this is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste. I'm an astrologer, a coach, and a teacher. And I'm here to give you the edge forecast for Leo season 2024. All right. Just a little bit about me. So I do personal readings, including chart rectifications, group events, and teach classes about astrology. And I teach online as well as internationally. You can find me at astrologybyceleste.com. My podcast is the Celestial Insights Podcast, here to help you navigate the energies of the week like a boss. I love this quote from Winston Churchill. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And Leo energy is dynamic. It's creative. It's courageous. It's represented by the strength card in the tarot correlates to the sign of Leo in astrology. So yeah. If, and if first you don't succeed, try, try again. Yeah. And that song by Aaliyah too comes to mind. Leo energy is a force. The sun rules the sign of Leo. When people have strong Leo energy in their chart, meaning they're a Leo sun, moon, or rising, or they have a, a, a concentration of planets, three or more, a stellium in the sign of Leo. There's something about them that they're here to express their ego and identity in some ways. Like that is important. High road Leo, just a high road Leo. They walk into a room, they capture our attention. They speak with conviction and inspire others. It's like that brave heart energy, like can inspire people to go to battle for a cause. Um, that's, you know, high, like a high road cause. Yeah. It captures our attention and radiates enthusiasm. Leo is the performer. So someone who can hold court and, Keep our attention while they take us on a journey philosophically or with their words, with pictures, what have you. Very creative energy. It also can be on the shadow side, very attention seeking, like uh, absorbing all the, sucking up all the oxygen in the room, bullying, never, never being quiet. Yeah, constant demanding to be the center of the attention, the center of the universe, like the sun. But Leo, high road Leo energy, it creates, it entertains, it performs, it inspires. It's a fire sign. It's a constellation. This year, Leo season will be from July 22nd to August 22nd. Now, there's some really big transits going on this Leo season. This Leo season won't be probably as fun as we would like a Leo season to be because at the same time, Mercury is going to be retrograde. And so although you can use this really beautifully to 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 have a beautiful Leo season. So first off, Mercury is the planet of communication. Now, Mercury also rules commerce and transportation. So keep that in mind as we move through this month. Mercury is going to move into its home sign of Virgo on July 25th. So really notice things uh, around that time. Now, Mercury in Virgo can do its energy and express it with ease. Uh, Virgo's job is to bring order to chaos. It's an earth sign, but it's ruled by Mercury. So it gives it a little bit of airiness. People with strong Virgo energy are great editors. They can pick through and see the mistakes. Virgo energy can be perfectionistic. 
also like a, someone with strong Virgo energy. Like think about if you go to the grocery store when Mercury enters Virgo and you're really looking at the labels and trying to figure out things so that you you um, want the best ingredients in whatever it is that you're going to be cooking or buying or what have you. Like really scrutinizing. That's what Vir Virgo energy can do. And with Mercury, it's your mind. You may decide, Mercury goes into Virgo. Oh, I really need to to do something better about my health, um, take better care of myself. Virgo rules the intestines. So notice if anything comes up intestinal with you. Now, as the season starts, Mercury is slowing down in order to go retrograde. Retrogrades are optical illusions because it's about the planet's distance from earth but what it looks like what's happening it's like when you're two cars and like there's like sometimes you look like they can be going at the same speed or something but one looks faster you know that's kind of thing um but what happens is what it will do is mercury will go through our chart it appears to stop and then it stops on that hot degree which is for Virgo, for people who know their charts. Then it goes backwards through the Zodiac and then it'll stop. And this will be at 21 Leo. And then it will go backwards. And so there's an area of your chart where it goes back and forth three times where depending on the nature of your chart, there can be things that come up again. Like you thought you made a plan. Retrogrades bring reversals, delays, Sometimes even the collapse of anything contemplated, there can be conflicts, disagreements, it's an affliction. Now, how we recommend we, you use this time is to slow down, triple check everything, triple check communications. This is going to be someone, while Mercury is retrograde from August 4th through 28th, sends an email to the wrong person. Yeah. Yeah, Mercury rules communication. Or you like you have you get a group email and you're talking about how Sally and accounting needs to be talked about about X, Y, and Z, and you accidentally chat tag Sally and accounting, and she gets this email and becomes aware of what is going on. That's a classic Mercury retrograde thing. So, mm, so just be mindful. It's not a great time to purchase any kind of electronic equipment. Um, you may see some hiccups with your electronic stuff. It's like fender bender accident energy. So slow down. Um, be prepared for delays. Get to meetings early. Double check your schedule. This is like S Sally thinks we're meeting at one. Bob thinks we're meeting at 130. And then you miss each other. Yeah. Signals get crossed. Ask for clarification rather than jumping to conclusions about what was said to you. So high road Virgo can be precise, organized, and helpful while retrograde, overly critical, perfectionistic, and keep an eye out for all the things I just mentioned. Great time to not start working on new things, but to, to continue working on what you've already started. It's a wonderful time to go back and revise things. Be prepared to notice mistakes. And just it gives you the opportunity and the invitation to fix them. It also is a great time to, like you'll run into people you haven't seen in forever. Your exes may slide into your DMs. Yeah, things can come back up. Now, so Mercury goes into Virgo July 25th and starts retrograding August 4th. Then it enters Leo August 14th through September 8th. So when Mercury going backwards, which is an affliction, goes back into the sign of Leo August 14th, you may notice like the people are inclined to disagree loudly or with Leo like just assuming everything will go well. There's something about confidence with Leo. Sometimes it can be overconfidence where the person could drop the ball. Each and and then uh, missing details. You're getting married and there are no napkins. You should not get married during Mercury retrograde. But if you are, it's just ill-advised. Um, but if you are, um, yeah, double check, triple check everything. Yeah. Now, Venus will enter the sign of Virgo from August 4th through 29th. So this is a very, uh, around the same time as the, the retrograde. So this is about 
Like people, okay, Venus rules relationships, love, harmony, and beauty. People will be making commitments or packs or decisions, but then the plans will fall apart. So yeah, or you meet someone and they say they're going to call you on Tuesday and they don't call you till Friday, that delay uh, in order to get together. There will be issues because the there'll be issues with, with things. And Venus is in fall in the sign of Virgo. So mm, it's, yeah, agreements made may not last, just so you know. And a Venus in Virgo is the independent lady. Say you're a gentleman or you could be a lady. It doesn't matter. You ask someone out and they say yes. But then they're like, mm, they're fickle uh, 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 in between. They're doing all this analysis in their head. Virgo analyzes and they decide, mm, eh, I don't want to go out with you anymore. And then uh, you're disappointed by love because Venus is in fall in Virgo. Now, high road energy and independent lady. Um, the nine of pentacles in the tarot deck is the Venus and Virgo correspondence card. Yeah. Expressing love through acts of service is a beautiful thing people with Venus and Virgo do. They'll cook a nice meal for you, take out the garbage, do the practical things, fix you know the handy person around the house. Virgo can be the craftsman mm -hmm, or woman. Now, seeing all the flaws on the shadow side and, and uh, relationships feeling out like just a lot of work. And during this transit, um, Venus and Virgo will be opposite Saturn. So there can be tests, challenges, and restrictions in relationship, money, beauty, things like that. If you get a beauty procedure while Venus is in Virgo, you might not be happy with it. So keep that in mind. The last thing I want to make you aware of is like Jupiter and Gemini will square Saturn and Pisces. They'll both be at 17 degrees of their respective signs if you know your astrology really well. And on August 19th. So this transit is building and it's been building since May 25th when Jupiter went into Gemini. But Jupiter is in detriment in Gemini. It does not like to be in this sign. Jupiter is the cosmic Santa Claus, higher wisdom. Jupiter sees the big picture and Gemini wants all the facts. So it can be just like your minds, brains can be scrambled because there's so much information coming at you. And Gemini is ruled by Mercury, the trickster. So the information might not even be real or true so be mindful of that now jupiter and gemini square saturn brings things to reality pisces deception you may find out like there may be some big story in the news about like some ad campaign or something that was really deceptive or yeah it could be something about a drug companies uh what they say how the drug helps them and then you find out, oh, yeah, this could be about like all these, these weight loss drugs, something in the news about them. Jupiter rules obesity, um, excess, as well as Jupiter rules doctors. It's, it wants to aid life. Saturn constricts, takes away from life. And Pisces rules drugs. So that's where I got the Ozempic type stuff. Yeah. And now Jupiter also rules judges and, and, um, Mm, celebrities, royalty. Yeah, there can be all sorts of news around these topics. Anyway, what in these two planets, when they come in a square formation, which is tense, there can be constriction, Saturn of wealth, Jupiter. So there could be financial news about this. Also, you can feel like your movement feels blocked. So Gemini rules transportation, the highways, like you want to you feel like you're going to be going fast, maybe even like a little commuter plane you want to take and boop, Saturn and Pisces, you can't go because they don't have oil Pisces or, you know, something like that. It's a great time to stock, stop addictive behaviors, Pisces rules, addiction and escapism. Yeah. And Saturn's the end. Saturn can stop things, bring things to a halt. Jupiter expands, Saturn contracts. Every month, we have the opportunity with the moon cycles to set intentions about what we want to bring into our lives. You can work consciously or not. It doesn't matter. These are at work and they're 
most impactful when they're activating one of your personal planets or angles. But anyway, I'm so glad that we're flipped back up where the new moon of the sign comes before the full moon. And it had been reversed because the full moons were in earlier degrees. So I'm glad we're flipped back up because then you can set intentions and see them come to light and just an easier, more natural inflow relationship. So at the new moon, the sky is dark. The sun and the moon come together. They whisper secrets about what they'd like to bring forward into your life into your mind, like your sun is your conscious mind, moon is your subconscious, and they're talking. So it's a time where working in intentionally, you can set intentions, make wishes, have rituals, initiate new projects. 12 Leo is the degree. I recommend this new moon setting intentions around self-expression, bringing more joy into your life, Leo rules joy. Uh, it's a natural ruler of the fifth house of self-expression, vacations, uh, um, risk-taking, children, creativity, all these things. How can you shine your light more brightly? With Mercury retrograde, it's better to refine what you've already started or working on rather than some starting something new. At the full moon on August 19th, this is when the moon ooh, and pulls away from the sun and starts waxing its life. You're growing, feeling more energy coming in the full moon where the sun and the moon are exactly opposite apart from each other um, is the culmination of the cycle. And that is going to be on August 19th. And this is a time to all is illuminated. The sun will be in Leo and the moon will be in the opposite side of Aquarius at 27 Aquarius. And that will be, what are you learning about like self-expression Leo versus Aquarius is the audience, it's the group, it's the friends, it's the collective, it's our hopes and dreams, it's our future. Yeah, where are we there looking at? Mm -hmm. All is illuminated, emotions are heightened. It's a great time for celebration. Although this full moon, I would celebrate party of one or two or three or four, like a small party, because it's like there's really a lot of intense energy. This is the same day as the, the Jupiter Saturn square. Like you think all these people, all these friends are coming to your party and then there's a big storm and like you're just, there's two of you there. Not a great day for necessarily a party. Or if you do have the party, uh, Venus is opposite Saturn. It costs more money than you've wanted it to be. So now you feel like you're in the poor house or uh, uh, somebody came and they were really an unpleasant guest to have. And they kind of put a damper on them, Venus and Virgo, by picking people apart and pointing out all these flaws or something like that. Or that's just, they were boring and not really fun. Yeah, these can be things that that can come up with this because, yeah, if something's Saturn, Saturn's going to Saturn and there's always going to be something or you go to a party and you just overdo it so much and you make a fool of yourself and you decide uh, I'm never drinking again. That could be something that happens with this energy or you could just have a really nice time and you keep it close and small and it's just lovely or you just sit, or reading a book, watching a movie, whatever you want to do. But think about, you may have some revelations around how you express yourself or hold yourself back because of fear of judgment or a desire to be liked. There can be relationship tests around this time. So be present. Like things are seated at the new moon and they come to the fruition at the full moon. So if you're working on your intentions, like that can be, uh, if you set intentions, oh, where am I now? Celebrate any wins. Release and forgive what didn't happen. And you can just keep going. As the moon wanes, there's still energy and push to, to disseminate and, and keep going. Okay, I'm going to talk about a few things and then I am going to talk about each sign of the zodiac. We'll get a forecast. So one of the things with this energy, um, I'm doing something called 40 Days of Spirit, which is intended to get in touch with your psychic and intuitive senses. My friend Tiffany Herlick has created this. You can go to bit.ly back forward slash 40 days of spirit or her website, tiffanyherlick.com. The coupon code is ABC40 for 40% off. And every day you're getting lessons about how to build a better relationship with your intuitive nature. It is 
phenomenal. And it's so in line for, let me see, I picked it for, why did I want to pick this? Hmm. I guess I'm just doing it now, but with Mercury retrograde, this is a great way to, to like with your mind going more internal because retrogrades are more internal and really opening up a relationship between yourself and your higher consciousness, God, your angels, your guides, whatever you call divine consciousness. It's, it's been really beautiful for me. I'm doing it myself. Okay. So, oops. I'm missing something. Hmm. Hold hold on to your hat. Oh well. I'm missing a slide. Anyway. Hold on to your hat. Okay, I've got my slide back. The disappearing slide. Hmm. Anyway, so just some upcoming events. So the Leo New Moon Workshop, I host these every month, is on Sunday, August 4th. I'm presenting in England at the Astrological Association Conference, August 28th through September 1st. And I'm teaching a track on moon mastery where you can learn everything about the moon at the Organization of Professional Astrology Retreat from October 16th through 21 at Park City, Utah. You can find these all on my website, either on the moon workshops page or the events page. I highly encourage you to check these out. Oh, and if you want to come to the OPA, it's going to be phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. We're going to be in a small group. You're going to learn everything about the moon. The advanced pricing ends August 10th. So the price goes up August 10th. Yeah. And I have limited spots. So join if you think you want to come. Okay. So now I'm going to go through each of the signs. We'll give you some guidance about some things to think about during this lunation cycle. So if you're an Aries sun or rising, you're having a new moon and the, and the sun will travel through your fifth house, highlighting themes around children, romance, love, sex, pleasure, gambling, these sorts of things, creativity and fun. Make resolutions to nurture your inner child improve your relationship with kids, build more joy, get sexy back. It's also the house of, yeah, sex for fun. The full moon will be in your 11th house. So you can listen for Aquarius too. Uh, yeah. If you are a Taurus, the sun will be moving through and spotlighting your fourth house of home, family, foundation, psychology, your most private self. Some things about childhood conditioning may come up. And you may learn some lessons about how you can be fixed in certain ways of being. So set some objectives around your home, connecting with your family, building security. You could do an ancestry project or genealogy thing. Mm -hmm. how, how do you nurture others for Taurus? And you want to think about your sun or your rising sign. And then the 10th house is where the full moon will illuminate things around your work and career and out in society. You can listen to Scorpio for that. Okay, if you're a Gemini sun, this a new moon will be highlighting and the sun will highlight your third house. The third house is um, early education, our siblings, like our cousins, our local community, things close to us. Yeah, our active mind, our thought processes. And this can be a time when there's a new moon in our third house when we're really busy running around doing errands. There may be things you need to take care of around your car. Cars are third house topics. Yeah, so set goals concerning networking, journaling practices. This is a great to get out of your head and into your heart and your mind with journaling. Do you need to tame your anxious, anxious mind or... Do something, get together with your siblings or things like that. You can listen for um, Sagittarius for the, about the full moon, what comes may be coming up for you. Yeah. 
So if you're a cancer, the second house is where the sun and the new moon will be. The second house rules our resources, our income, values, self-esteem, security needs, attitudes towards money. Um, so set intentions about building savings, cut, reducing debt, increasing income, honing your, like really getting in touch with your values. What are, what, what are the things that you really think are really important? Like, does your self-esteem need a boost? And you can listen to Capricorn for the full moon in the eighth house. Um, for a Leo, this is your first house. So the first house rules the self, the identity, the physical body. If you're a Leo son, this is your birthday is coming up. The spotlight is on you and how other people see you and the masks you wear. You may just decide to make a change to your looks. I would be a little careful about it this month with Mercury retrograde. Notice if you want to go to the beauty parlor or the, uh, the barber shop, and your stylist is late. That could be something with Mercury retrograde and a new mood in your, your first house. Mm, and, but Venus opposite Saturn, you may not love the new look. So just keep that in mind. It's not the best time to change your look. Wait till Venus is in Libra. Mm. Okay. Well, mm, mm, yeah, anyway, that might be better. Mm, I think that's a better time. Yeah, Venus is at home in Libra. Anyway, create actions around health developing confidence and asserting yourself in the world. And if you want, like this could be a little rebranding for you, Leo. Oh, listen to Aquarius for the full moon in your seventh. Okay, Virgo, you are having a, the sun moving through your 12th house. So when, and a new moon there. So this is your invitation to slow down, reset yourself, the 12th house is the house of solitude. It's a house of endings, um, sleep hygiene, secrets, hidden enemies. Some secret may come to your light. Yeah. The, mm, yeah, it can be escapism and self undoing can be themes around the 12th house. It's a great time to focus on mental health, taming bad habits, having some downtime because it's almost like a rebirth when you have a new moon in your first house. So this is like the last, the end, the 12th house. So slow down. And with Mercury, your chart ruler and your son, your ruler, Mercury rules Virgo retrograde, really a great time. Mm, yeah. If you are a Libra sun arising, oh, and Sorry, Virgo can listen to Pisces for the opposite. Your sixth house, full moon. Okay, Libra, sun arising. The 11th house is friends, groups, associations, hopes, and dreams. Whenever you have a new moon in your 11th house, it's a great time to just put your, ask the universe, God, your, your spirit, whatever your divine consciousness is for, whatever you want and you watch and be amazed about what can you come into your life. Yes. Now you set intentions about your deepest desires, your role in groups, plan times with friends. Yeah. Now the full moon will be in your fifth house. So remember what I said for Aries and you can think about how those topics could be coming to life. So that would be like the children and, and sex and dating and things you do for joy and creativity. If you're a Scorpio, this new moon is in your 10th house, which is the house of career, status, reputation, calling, fame, your public persona, achievements. So like, what do you want to achieve in your career? What do you want to achieve in your, if you don't have a, a, a career, what do you want to achieve in like your legacy? What are you leaving behind? Are you teaching your children things or family or what have you? Mm, yeah. So set objectives around your life goals, raising your public profile. You can go back and listen to Taurus for the full moon and what things may come up. 
For Sagittarius, this new moon is in your ninth house of long distance travel, higher education, in-laws, higher courts, publishing. Do you want to publish anything, whether it's a blog or what have you? This is a new moon to set intentions around that. What is there some topic you want to learn about? This would be a great if you had any interest in 40 days of spirit. That would be something where you could learn something new about how to integrate, how to, you know, work with your 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 divine gifts better. You can make plans and learn new skills, get involved. Local politics can be a topic of the, the local law and elections. Expand your mind. You can go back and listen to Gemini for third house topics that you may become aware of at the full moon. If you are a Capricorn sun arising, this new moon is in your eighth house. The eighth house is a house of uh, seek at uh, the house of um the shadows where things we'd rather disown come up to our conscious attention so there may be things about yourself that you'd rather not admit but mm, like with capricorn do you like to keep up with the joneses or do you get jealous of people who who shine their lights shine them bright leo types yeah mm. Do you, yeah, do you let your ambitions uh, lead you into doing some things that aren't, you wish you wouldn't do? Yeah, you, these are some of the things that can come up for you. And it's not for you to feel bad about yourself. It's for you to recognize and have some, you know, just because something is, it's, a, 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 it's in our subconscious doesn't mean we have to do it. The eighth house also rules sexuality, death, debt, taxes, inheritance, other people's property, uh, joint finances. Yeah. So this can be stuff around, maybe you're thinking a lot about your partners. What are they really thinking? What are they doing? Cause it's your partners. Um, their some, their, uh, values. Yeah. So it's a great time to set intentions to re reduce debt, focus on intimacy with your partner, face your shadows. If you're thinking you could use some, um, therapy, this is the time. The full moon will light up your second house of values and money and things. You can listen back for, for cancer to, to hear more about that. For Aquarius, this new moon and the sun will be lighting up your seventh house of the other, the one-on-one -on -one partnerships. Like it can be a love partner, it's a business partner, um, a BFF. Now it's also the house of open enemies. So if you're in it with somebody like in a lawsuit, uh, there could be a new start around stuff like that or just highlighting stuff about that. Great time to set intentions about socializing more. If you're single and you want to mingle, maybe you make a plan about meeting more people, bringing beauty into your life, working on your serious relationships. And you may see some things about your partner, see them head on that you hadn't noticed before. Yeah, about how they express themselves or shine their light or don't do it or lack thereof. The full moon, you can go back and listen to Leo. To like Things may come to your conscious attention about how you do Leo things versus how your partner does. Or they may say something to you that is a beautiful opportunity for you to do some self-reflection. Now, if you're a Pisces, this new moon will be in your sixth house. The so sixth house rules routines, daily habits, health, preventative health, small pets, employees. You may make an appointment with your doctor during this time as the sun is lighting up things that go wrong with your health. Also, it rules employees, people who live on your property, just your day-to-day -day job that you do for the money you make, um, worries and how you serve. It's like the house of burdens. Like you can just have a lot of things you have to do for some reason that you really would rather not, but you know, the doing them helps bring order to chaos in your life. So it's, it's a good idea to be doing them Pisces. Yeah. Yeah. So set intentions around improving your health, bring order to your life. Like you may decide to integrate some kind of task management system in order to, mm, in order to uh in order to make your life more manageable 
Yeah, think about anxiety and how can you reduce it, replacing bad habits. This would be perfect for 40 days in spirit. Now I remember is Jupiter and Pisces, Jupiter and Gemini square Saturn and Pisces. Saturn and Pisces can be disciplined practices around, around um, your intuitive nature and your psychic senses and Jupiter and, and Gemini. You're learning this tool to do it. So yeah, that could be for Pisces. And you can listen back to Virgo for, for the full moon. Yeah. Okay. So this, uh, okay. Oh, I guess this is the last slide. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Again, this is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste. I'm an Astrology by Celeste everywhere. And you can listen to my podcast, Celestial Insights Podcast, if because I talk about events in the news and things about how what could be coming up for us this week to help you navigate the uh, energies like a, a boss. I'm signing off as an edge columnist. Have a beautiful day.